please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, the Arvind stock has got a booster of late uh, after the CLSA upgrade and the price target jump of 22% on the back of strong growth in textiles and brand and retail uh, businesses. We have uh, Kulin Lalbhai, Executive Director of Arvind now joining us. Uh, Kulin, good morning. You know, the, the first thing that I want to understand is that is, is the demerger still the way forward for Arvind because, you know, that's been spoken about for so long or uh, is this off the shelf for now? Yes, so I think uh, the demerger is a very exciting milestone for the group. So the current company is going to split into three companies, Arvind, Arvind Fashions and Anoop Engineering. And we are very excited because each of these three businesses will now be able to chart an independent course. Mm -hmm. I think each one of them has very interesting opportunities in front of them. No, the reason, we sorry, have a sorry, textile sorry, you know, opportunity just... which Arvind Limited will get advantage of. The, the, reason I, the reason I ask this is that if you have any timeline, because, you know, we know that you, you have two or three, uh, you know, separate businesses, of course, which will be, you know, there, but any timeline in terms of when the demerger will be complete, when will you have separate listed companies? Yes, Anud, so we have already announced the demerger. It's been approved by the board. Uh, it would take seven to eight months for the three businesses to list. Okay. All right. You were telling us uh, about uh, the performance of each. Can you give us an idea of what will be the approximate asset split or revenue split? Arvind, Arvind Fashion, Anup Engineer. So right now, um, Arvind is uh, around 60% of the group turnover. Okay. Uh, the brand's business is around 35% of the group turnover. Mm. Anoop at the moment is, um, is relatively small. It's a mm. 200 crore uh, company, mm. but with a very exciting opportunity as well. And as I was saying, I think each one of these three businesses is looking at a very unique opportunity. You have a textile global supply chain which is getting restructured. So Arvind is getting back into a capex cycle on the textile side and is going to take advantage of that opportunity. You have a fashions business which has now come of age. It can be independent, uh, it does not need cash flows from the parent and it's going to see strong continued top line growth but an even stronger bottom line growth. And we have Anoop Engineering which is an engineering business with very strong balance sheet and return on capital employed. So each one of these three businesses we believe has a very exciting value creation path over the next five years. So can you tell us a little bit about the brand's business and what kind of growth you see specifically in speciality brands? Because your, uh, you know, your brands like Gap, Sephora, Aeropostale that you've brought down have done relatively well over the last many uh, quarters. What's the growth looking like there? So as, as the whole portfolio is concerned, you know, we, we are very confident of more than a 20% growth continuing. And, uh, you know, uh, as far as the new brands are concerned, whilst we've seen the power brands consistently growing with very strong profitability, I think the very exciting thing happening in the portfolio is that the newer brands, brands such as Sephora, Aeropostal, Gap, Children's Place, they are seeing incredibly strong growth. Of course, the, the base is small. But um, all of these brands are going to see, you know, their top line breach the 150 crore mark. And when brands tend to do that, the operating leverage really kicks in. Besides the speciality retail formats, the other very exciting milestone will be that our value format unlimited will also be moving towards the 1,000 crore uh, revenue mark next year. And as um, our retail businesses and the newer brands reach maturity, you will see the profitability profile also change. So mm -hmm. in the first half of this year, whilst the top line of the business grew around 20%, we saw the operating profit growing by 60%. Wow. So that's the operating leverage which is kicking in as the business is maturing. So okay, that's was, that was going to be my question actually. Uh, how do you see the EBITDA growth of Arvind Brands and EBITDA growth of Arvind for uh, some time now? for the next few quarters or years? Sure, I think in Arvind Brands, we believe that with this maturity of the portfolio, 150 basis points improvement each year over the next three, four years 
is what the business should achieve. Mm -hmm. And we believe the top line growth of more than 20% with the current portfolio is also achievable. Okay. So that's the plan we have set out for ourselves. Okay. As far as Arvind Limited is concerned, I think the textile business has, has industry leading EBITDA margins as well as return on capital employed. That business has seen its ROCE north of 20% over the last five years. Mm -hmm. What the business hadn't seen in the past is a very strong revenue growth because mm -hmm. most of our investments were on the brand side. What will happen in the textile business now is that we are seeing very strong growth opportunities. We are going to get opportunities. We are going to get into a capital capex cycle um, over the next three to four years. So we hope to invest uh, 1,500 crores in the textile business mm. uh, over the next three, four years. And that should push up our growth to north of 10%. And it's a strategy which will invest in three major areas. One is verticalization, which is selling garment solutions rather than just fabrics. Getting into smart fabrics, which we believe is the future, which is highly functional new age fabrics. And getting into advanced materials, our mm. technical textiles business, which is showing great promise. So I think we're very excited that the textile business, uh, which will now kind of be able to reinvest its cash flows into its own growth, mm -hmm. will get into a new, uh, new kind of paradigm of growth. Okay, just a two-part question, uh, Kulin, if you can uh, answer it. Uh, one, will you be looking to raise any funds or will, will, these, will this 1,500 crores come in from your own cash itself? Uh, that you're plowing in and two for advanced materials particularly what kind of growth do you foresee over the next say one year sure so um, on on the fund question um, on the textile business side there is a very strong free cash flow coming in so everything that I mentioned is coming through internal accruals mm -hmm. even our fashions business which will be independent uh, is is listing with a very strong pre-capitalization. So we'll have a balance sheet which will have a, a debt equity of 0.6. And again, with a very strong pivot on the operating profit, uh, that business is also self-funded as far as its, uh, its growth plans for next year are concerned. The advanced material business is uh, close to a 700 crore business today. Mm. It's growing rapidly. Um, I think the growth in that business will be northwards of 20%. Mm. Um, and we are looking at a lot of exciting opportunities there as well. Okay. Pleasure speaking with you, Kulin. Thank you very much for joining us and all the very best uh, for your listing. Though I guess we will have many occasions to speak before that if it is seven to eight months away. Thanks a lot for joining us today. All right, uh, we have to take a break. A colorful story from uh, Arvind, but uh, only red color for the markets at this point in time. Lowest point on all the indices. So we'll take a break and come back and concentrate on something which is not falling. The big buzzer of yesterday, milk stocks. We'll touch base with Devendra Shah, Chairman, Parag Milk Foods. As promised, we're going to talk about the dairy industry. The stocks have been milking in gains all of 2017 with the likes of Heritage Foods, Prabhat Dairy and Hudson Agro all up anywhere from 75 to 140 percent. Parag Milk, on the other hand, has been a rank underperformer with flat returns for the year, although the stock rose 11 percent intraday yesterday on striking a deal with the Taj Group. Devendra Shah, the chairman of Parag Milk Foods, joins us now to talk about that. Mr. Shah, good morning. You've joined hands with the Taj Group to supply uh, your product products on Good. the international flights. Uh, just tell us a little bit about that. What products will you be supplying and what kind of revenue potential does this throw up? Basically, in the Taj sets, we were taking our relation at the next level. And in their trades, basically, we served them to the curd, yogurt, uh, the paneer, and a different type of the cheese variant of the... Basically, you know, the, in that any uh, trades in the food service, mm. the 30, 35 percent shares mm. of the dairy, mm. yeah, and we are getting the very freshly services. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is the total uh, order that you have mm. from them, and is there uh, an ability to increase prices if your raw materials went up? Uh, any details you can share? Uh, this contract and this business is uh, like a, 
uh, not for the one time. It's uh, continuously on the three months a rate is uh, contracted, and supply will be continuously for the long term. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a ma match with our the procurement prices and others. So okay. that will be bought a steady ten percent margin. Uh, How should we? Prices are yeah. Okay, but we protect our margins itself. Yeah. Okay, that's that's good to hear, Mr. Shah. Uh, good morning. And so they are go giving the good margins too, sir. Okay, yeah, 9.9% .9 was your last reported margin Good compared morning. to 7%. It's been, uh, you know, steady growth for you, uh, uh, Mr. Shah, over the last three or four years. Uh, uh, do, do you think this this pace can continue as uh, you know the as you penetrate more into you know uh, more markets, uh, or uh, are we likely to hit a bit of a plateau as we move forward? Yeah, yeah. Again, this uh, quarter also. In my company, historical uh, quarter, yeah, we are doing very good in the value-added uh, product, and this type of the all uh, setup and arrangement, we are start with all food services, so with the specialty food service, and absolutely our margins uh, uh, grow high mm. with the value-added product. Okay. So, what kind of growth have yeah, you seen in the revenues of the, for uh, uh, value-added product? Good example: sports nutrition. Okay. Yeah. The absolutely, in our turnover, 80% is the value-added product. 20% okay. we are selling the liquid milk and other products. My colleague, uh, you know, yeah. uh, Abhishek wants to know. Yeah, Avatar is the one of the best. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Sham, you know, my colleague Abhishek wants to know why are you raising uh, ghee prices every month? <laughs> <laughs> ghee is the one of the, our flagship product. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the last uh, Diwali, it's happened. But now uh, this price is steady mm. from last uh, two, three months. Okay. And I'll be happy to announce that so we'll uh, keep continue okay. this price is up to the March. Okay. Uh, well, uh, your uh, revenues are rising by about uh, six point seven. Okay, s around seven percent increase in revenues in the last quarter that you reported. Uh, should we see a sp an improvement in the revenue yeah. growth, in the f pace of growth? That's, yeah, it's the same growth. In Again, I say that uh, this is a historical one more mm. this quarter in my uh, company's history. Yeah, okay. this, this quarter is also going go very good mm. because of the all festivals, December's, December's is especially the Christmas holidays and the all the pizza chain on our cheese consumption is going very okay. good. Mr. Shah, we'll yeah, have to leave it at I that. We have run out well. of time, but thank you so much for stopping by and speaking with us. And now you know that the consumption of ghee is pretty high in the CNBC TV18 team. <laughs> Thanks so much for speaking. I think he's with raising us. prices for that. Abhishek has <laughs> less of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, market's also a bit in a slippery ground, you will have to say, speaking of oils and ghees. Uh, Bank Nifty at the lowest point uh, and the Nifty at the lowest point as we wind down on Bazaar. So trading ideas will come up for you of course on both sides on chart busters in a minute